Hello, good evening and welcome to Our Front. Today, I'm sure you do know that on June 4th, 1979, some 40 years ago, a Major General, the Army Commander, was arrested. He was actually killed at the Nima Police Station. We will get to know the full story from this commander's family. One very person that's been very much vociferous about this particular action is that of the daughter. My guest today is Esther Odato Wellington. Esther Odato Wellington will tell us the story from what she heard, what she knows, and how far we come with this particular act. More importantly, we'll be seeking to find out from her what's happened with all of their quests to do the things that would permanently or immortalize the general who was killed here in Ghana on the day that there was an insurrection. When she joins me, you hear the very detailed story of how the family had to cope, or the things that they had to do, and how virtually life ground to a halt for them. After the break, she'll be here for the conversation to commence. Welcome back. This is Upfront. My name is Raymond Dalqua. I did tell you that my guest today is one person you'd love to hear from. Now, I'm sure you've heard that in 1979, some generals in the Republic of Ghana were killed. But one that fell on the day of the insurrection is General Odati Wellington. Her daughter is with me in studio today. Esther, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I hope you are doing well this day. Yes, I am. Thank you. Now, I want us to go back, and as far as you can recollect what you've been told. So, I want to properly sit with this for me. What were the circumstances surrounding the murder of your father? Right. Um, my father, um, in 1979, was the army commander. Um, on June 4th, he uh, got a call from one of his unit commanders that there was a problem. And so he went to take care of the problem. He ended up uh, at one point going to the broadcasting house to uh, um, make an announcement to all troops because he was very concerned that there should not be casualties. And after that, he, he left the broadcasting house and went to uh, the uh, police headquarters, I believe. Um, while there, the Air Force uh, planes kept on circling and, uh, because they knew he was there and I think wanted to bomb the place. So my father, uh, again mindful of the fact that um, he wanted to avoid uh, casualties, decided to leave the uh, police headquarters uh, and uh, he left there in a police mowag to Nima police station. Uh, of course, he was in full military gear um, in his general's uniform. He was not in mufti. Um, so when he arrived at the Nima police station, um, there were some civilians in the vicinity who saw him. Uh, he went there with his ADC and his bodyguard and apparently there was a truckload of soldiers along the ring road and uh, I think a civilian went and said to them, look, uh, General Odati Wellington is here at the Nima police station. So uh, they went in there and started shooting indiscriminately and my father was mortally wounded and um, anyone who has any knowledge of uh, military history will tell you that uh, during combat when someone is mortally wounded you don't go and stand over them and uh, spray them with your machine gun even if they were enemy combatants but this was the general of the Ghana armed forces and his own soldiers went and just uh, executed him yes when he was mortally wounded Okay, so this was not a situation where a team 
or he had been asked to surrender, he had refused, and a team has actually come to him to compel him to surrender. This was just people who were military people passing by. That's correct. That, uh, that's, so far as I know, yes. So but they could identify him? Of course. And they targeted him? Of course. And this was because, I mean, he was the one that they wanted to kill in this case? I would have thought so. Had he been declared wanted? Not at all, not to my knowledge. Had he been told that some of the things he was doing was wrong, so he needed to be dealt with that way? No, not to my knowledge. I get your point because it will sound strange that people, rational people who are supposed to be law officers who gang up on their army commander. Of course, this was a period where there was a military form of uprising. So was there a directive to kill every person who was a senior to them? So far as I'm aware, uh, the person who started or cause of this mutiny uh, wanted all senior officers, i.e. major and above, to be dealt with. Dealt with meant arrested or detained or I killed think he, on site. I think they wanted them killed. I see. They wanted them, they wanted them killed. And that is why they started with the execution of the generals. Okay, I get your point. Now, let me bring in this point. You, where were you when all this was happening? I was a teenager. I was in boarding school, in Ajimoto school, right in my uh, O-levels. I see. Mm -hmm. And I remember that morning, I remember hearing my father's voice uh, on the radio uh, saying that uh, the uh, mutiny had been quelled and asking for soldiers, uh, even those involved in it, to return to barracks and hand in their weapons, yes. That's what you heard? Yes, that's you what were I recall. You that everything was all right? Yes, I, I thought because my father was strong, brave, and I had the utmost confidence that uh, so long as he, ha he was there, everything would be all right. Yes, I believe so. So since you heard his voice on yes. the radio at the yeah. time, mm -hmm. did you hear from him again? No, I did not. I did not. Um, what I found out after the fact is my mates in uh, the boarding house, um, when they realized that he'd been killed, I think they um, disconnected. There was an old black and white television there, if I recall. They disconnected it. And I think the radio as well. So I didn't hear anything, but I just thought, yeah, everything was under control. So at what point did you get to know that this incident had happened? His uh, murder, did you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, re I can't remember the day exactly, but it was in the middle of the, my O levels, and it was one afternoon, and I was sitting with a friend, and I saw a vehicle that I recognized a colleague of my father's and I thought oh news from home he's coming to tell me everything is fine you know I, I didn't have any doubts at all I, I was I think quite confident and my friend who knew what had happened tried to dissuade me tried to discourage me from sort of going after the car or so but I didn't want to hear of it and I went out and started waving, I'm here, I'm here, and I was, uh, I, I was told the news. And of course, I started wailing. Uh, I was just, you, one never thinks at that age of one's parent dying, really. So, although he was a military officer, I, I still didn't think that, yeah. You believe the story right away, or it took you some time to come to terms with the fact that this has really happened? The person who told me the news was with him in his dying moment, yeah. so I was, I was shocked, I was horrified, I was in pain, I was all sorts of things. I think um, 
reality eventually did set in, and that he really was dead. But it was quite difficult to imagine him lying dead. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me get this part. I mean, many might have heard of him, or they knew him out there. Yes. To you, the family, and to you, the daughter, mm. who was the major general? He was a lovely man. Mm. Um, I think on the outside, people just saw him as being very strict and mm -hmm. military uh, man. Yes, he was that, but he was a loving father. He was a responsible father. He always paid our school fees on time. I can remember him you know, as far back as when I was a little girl, you know, with his sheet of paper at the end of the month doing his budget for you know, the various things. And he made sure that, uh, you know, we were well looked after. Uh, he was a disciplinarian. Uh, he uh, was proud of his humble origins. Uh, he'd made something of himself. And he was uh, determined that we did well in mm. school. And uh, yeah. So how many were you in this family? Um, I've got four other siblings, yes. Okay. Males, females? Um, first three are female ladies and the last two are men. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yes. Yes. And I'm asking you about family because this was a man that took care of the family. Yes. How did you cope in his absence? Oh, it was terrible. Uh, it was terrible. Uh, as I said to you before, he always made sure our school fees paid on time. My mother was a housewife, you see, and daddy took care of everything. Um, and so when daddy was no longer there, it was a real shock. I mean, plus the fact that um, my mother didn't have the benefit of everything that you know, was in the family home because the family home, we, li we always lived in the barracks. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were at Bema Camp at that time and the house was sacked completely. It was ransacked, it was looted and everything. So, so, so when did it happen? I mean, the incident happened. In yes. My mother, uh, of course, left the house when mm -hmm. it became too dangerous, okay. you see. She'd been in telephone contact with Daddy, mm -hmm. and when it became, and then after a while, she didn't hear from him again, okay. and uh, she, she, she left the house. And uh, we didn't go back until, I can't remember when, but of, maybe after days, I can't really recall now, okay. but indeed when we got there, it was just terrible uh, to the extent that somebody had gone in there taken off her old and dirty slippers left them in the master bedroom and worn my mother's slippers that was it they took everything away everything everything away and just left i don't know took everything away so then you were still in school um, or you come home? because after O levels uh, we sort of are able to come home, yes, yes, before everyone else leaves, yes. So I, I, I can't, re my mother, um, she left the place and because we didn't have anywhere to go to, I remember uh, I, I found her or they came and found me and I found her uh, uh, sheltering uh, at a friend's house. Mm. Mm. Now, the understanding that a family obviously losing the breadwinner mm. will have problems. When it came to finances and where to live, mm -hmm. what happened? Oh, we were in limbo for a long time. Um, we left the friend's house and then eventually um, my mother's only sister was very kind. Uh, Mrs. Ruth Toto, Auntie Ruth, she took us in. Mm. Yes, and we stayed with her for a um, considerable period. And this was outside the barracks? Outside the barracks, yes. This is a barracks girl. You've lived your entire life there. How was life outside the barracks? Very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Very confusing. Yeah. I still find it confusing <laughs> in City Street. Um, it, it was, of course, very unusual or abnormal times. So everything 
was just confused. I see. But you were able to make it through. At that time, were you, all your siblings with you or...? Um, yes, uh, apart from my uh, eldest sister who was away, um, we're all here in boarding school and then of course uh, the last of the family who was still in primary school, so he I was see. actually with my mother in the barracks uh, uh, on uh, June 4th, yes. The one who was not around, how did she get to know of this incident? Oh yeah, that was terrible. Um, she switched on the BBC uh, radio, um, unfortunately for her, she was by herself and she heard it. Yeah. Oh, okay, so they announced it on BBC? Yes, yes, indeed. Did, did they announced the, the mutinous act and who died immediately? Or oh, this was days after? No, it must have been in the immediate aftermath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when of course my mother had not, uh, I'm not sure whether my mother even knew okay. then, but anybody uh, uh, could not get in touch with her or yes, so uh, I mean, uh, we'd all, we, everyone in the family is interested in current affairs, I mean yeah, that's okay. something that our father was interested in and discussed with us, so I think my sister might as a uh, normal thing, um, you know, listened to BBC, uh, every day or in the morning before she went to school whatever and she t tuned in as usual only to get this information but i can't tell you whether it was the following morning or what but it was not long afterwards these were strange circumstances yes was there any proper burial proper funeral done for the legend yes um he was killed on the 4th of June. Of course, we didn't know where the body went or anything like that. Okay. Um, and I think, I can't recall readily uh, how soon after the event, my mother found out that uh, the body was at the 37, uh, Okay. 37 military uh, sem um, hospital yes yes but uh, i recall one incident when somebody came and said oh i went to the mortuary and i saw the general's body you know and my okay. mother was okay. very upset mm -hmm. uh, up to today i don't know whether it was the person was genuine i don't know but my mother was terribly upset you know anyway the soldiers were bickering over the body and at one point they said okay he'll be buried tomorrow then we go and have a week keeping and then it doesn't happen I see. yes eventually they settled on a date which they honored and they asked uh, to give him a um, state burial with full military honors and that took place on the 17th of august that's what the military did indeed indeed uh, 1979, yes, so a couple months after uh, the uh, death, uh, they, they gave him a, a, full military, a, a state burial with full military uh, honours and gun salute and everything else, all the trappings, yes. Was this still during the period of the June 4th AFRC? Yes, AFRC? yes, indeed, it was, it was. I mean, this is some form of admission that he did nothing wrong. Obviously. Because if a soldier is removed from duty or yes. is deemed to have actually committed crimes, that yes. can, 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 he'll not be given that kind of burial, right? Yes. I state categorically that to date nobody has told me that my father did any wrong. I think what is known universally is that he died in the course of duty. He died trying to defend this country. He was... Um, uh, he, 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 he was loyal to his position and his command and he did what an army commander should have done. And so he died, uh, you know, honorably. The claim, I'm sure you've heard one before, was that, I mean, the senior officers were a bit repressive. They were making the junior officers suffer. Mm. Again, mm. the senior officers were power hungry. Mm. They were corrupt people. Mm. Some of them had looted state resources. Some of them were living very affluent lives, mm. which were not in keeping 
mm -hmm. with the standards of the military and the things mm. that they are supposed to be known for. Mm -hmm. To your mind and what you saw of him, did your father fit into any of these reasons that have been given? Not at all. That, that is a nonsense. As I said to you, we'd always lived in the barracks, mm -hmm. except for the uh, brief period uh, in the early 70s when my father was appointed a chief executive of Ghana Timber Marketing Board in uh, Takrade. And we stayed in the chief executive's house. But apart from then, we've always stayed in the barracks. Did he have many houses? No, he did not have many houses. As a matter of fact, um, when my father, shortly after he was commissioned into the Ghana Army, uh, he was deployed to the Congo okay. on a UN mission. Mm -hmm. And most people who know him know the story because he will tell it of how he kept his allowance while he was away. He kept mm -hmm. his podium, he kept it and he saved it. My father was a good one for saving mm -hmm. and uh, he had his post of his savings book. He opened the same for us when we were kids mm -hmm. and I don't know where the are anymore. Of course, when the house was looted, we lost all the documents, but uh, he kept his savings from uh, his deployment in the Congo and when he returned as a young, I think, he must have been a captain or so, if I'm not mistaken. He could only afford to buy um, land at Medina. I and see. he bought land there and he built the house and he didn't build it overnight because I remember when we were little, we used to visit the site and play with the um, bits of wood and things like that. And he slowly, slowly, slowly built it. So that was the house that he had. That's it that was the house that he had. Cars, the things that showed that a man has, did he have many cars, so many of them, as well one of the accusations was that these generals virtually had cars for everything. Did he oh have really? Yeah. He had a staff car, mm -hmm. which uh, he used to go to work in, and he had a Ford Zephyr, which I remember he bought in the 70s when he went to Staff College in Camberley in okay. the UK. Mm. He bought it. I remember, um, what are the cars right now? They are right-hand drive? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, in those days it was left-hand drive. Yeah? No, actually they are left now. They are left-hand drive. Okay, so right-hand drive, he, mm -hmm. that's what he bought. And he had it all the way from Takrade and took it all around and it was still in Bemakam. I see. Yes, and my mother had a Datsun 120Y. Mm. I get you. Now, the man was giving full state burial. Yes. Was he, w w the family? Did you receive compensation? Uh, not at all. Not at all? No, not at all. I mean, there wasn't anything instituted to keep, take care of you? Not at all. I remember writing, uh, you know, letters and letters on behalf of my mother. I mean, we wrote letters to whoever the powers were in those days and nothing ever came of it. Immediately or later on? Are you talking about the immediate um, after the burial or it was way back? after all of these incidents has gone down? When he was uh, buried, I think we still my, uh, lived with my aunt. Uh, but I remember writing those letters when we, we'd moved to Medina. So it must have been, yeah, perhaps the year after or something like that. In between the FRC period and uh, PNDC, there was a civilian government. Yes. Where similar overtures made to the government to Hey, what was due this family? Um, I can't remember, but I don't think that government was in place for very long, was it? Yes. So it, uh, no, no, uh, no. So almost 22, 27 months. Yeah. Yeah. So it must have been here for, uh, perhaps in the PNDC okay. era. Voila. Mm -hmm. mm. And you're convinced that not a person has been paid your family. So long as I, so far as I know. Is that yeah. standard practice? I wouldn't know. I don't know whether anyone else has received but did something. did you say that there was a legitimate demand for it? Would you say that? Yes, because I remember we wrote, we wrote, we wrote, we wrote. Okay. 
in all of your quests, there's a question. As we speak, has the events of the day leading to the death of your father been investigated and those found culpable, identified at least? Not to my knowledge. I know that there was a national uh, uh, truth Record. and reconciliation yeah. of Wala. But that was uh, way, way after. after. This is 2002. Yes. About, um, yes, the immediate happenings yeah. after burial, mm. of course, and the, I mean, the times in between that period. No, um, that, that is the irony of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, the general was given a state burial with mm -hmm. full military honours, as you say, but uh, nobody cared about his widow and his children afterwards. No, they did not. Not at all? Not at all, no. Not even an attempt to make sure that you are at least settled? Probably. No, they, they did not. Nobody did, no. No. Categorically say no. Okay, so till today, do we know the people that killed him? I, I do. I do. do. Yes, I do. I mean, I made up. I, I, yes, I wasn't there, but I made it my business to find out. And don't forget that he had his Ed Con in the room with him. Mm -hmm. He had his bodyguard in the room with him. So there were witnesses. There were witnesses. People you can identify. I don't know them by sight, okay. but I know of them. I know who they are. Their names. You know their names. Oh yes, I do. And I, I know, I think some of them did actually boast about it. Really? Or, or the person who did it boasted about it. Were, were they still in the office? Were they still part of the military force? Oh, they, they, they were. Space? No, 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 no. They, they were indeed. They were. Were they investigated? Not to my knowledge. And that's a very good question because, as I said, um, even in a, in a war, I think in the world wars, soldiers who actually shot prisoners when they surren surrendered or when there was a, I think they were uh, 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 um, investigated. Yeah, they were dealt with. They were, de they were dealt with, yes. So if I get you right, what yes. you're saying is that in the 40 years prior to and after, mm -hmm. the only form of inquiry was the National Reconciliation Commission's work? Yes, yes, so far as I'm aware, yes. Did you ever try to reach out to any of these people that you were told or believed killed the father? Well, I wouldn't know where to find them. And secondly, I mean, to what end? Yeah. To what end? So they stayed in the military for some time, is that what I'm, you are told? I'm sure they did, yes. And these were predominantly junior officers? They were other ranks. Okay. Yeah, of course, other ranks. They were not even officers in the first place. Do you know them? You've been told their names. Mm -hmm. Can you share them? I'm, I'm pushing you because I, I am wondering how ordinary officers killed a, a, a major general, mm. and they were not made to answer for it. Mm. So that's where my difficulty is. I have I know the names because I asked who mm. was there. So I think. The best thing is to ask who was in the room with the general at the time, because they can substantiate. Yes, th they can tell you exactly. Okay, I, I get your point. Now, fast forward be beyond the days and all of that. Your family, your sisters and your brothers, how did you cope? How did you come to terms with losing your father? And by the way, where are they now? It was very difficult, as I said to you. It was, it was extremely difficult when uh, the breadwinner of the family um, dies uh, prematurely. And in the um, dispensation that we were in, uh, uh, no, and people didn't want to know you, people didn't want to talk to you, uh, your name, because they were scared or whatever it was. So, uh, normal things, say, certain state schools for my primary schools were not open to my 
little brother. Oh, government schools? Yeah, it, say again? Government schools? Yeah, yes, not indeed. Private schools. Not, not private schools? No, 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 no. Uh, things like, cause, and up till today, I find that thing still prevalent. Uh, that people, they hear the name, you want a service rendered, which you're going to pay for, uh, which you're going to pay for, and they take it upon themselves to refuse you that subtly, sometimes overtly, because they think they're upsetting somebody somewhere. No, that, that, okay, so you're saying that even today, even today, there is still some form of discrimination oh, just there is. because you are mm, mm. a major general's daughter. Uh, not just because I am a major general, but because I'm major general Odarte Wellington's daughter. They seem to have a problem with the service children of the murdered or late generals. I don't know what their problem is now. As uh, recently as yesterday, I had that problem because people don't seem to be able to understand that uh, we are ordinary human beings, we feel pain, we feel joy, we are just like anybody else, and it's incidental that our fathers were who they were, so that if we were uh, to... You didn't choose your fathers in the Of course not, yeah. of course not, so that if you were to express an opinion about anything, they saw it differently if you ask the question, because I try to go to Nima police station. Uh, I'm sorry, I digress. You asked me a question. Yes, but yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, <laughs> no, no, I was actually going to ask about that. Yes, and yes. So tell us about this Nima police station incident. Right. And, and it, it is important because yes. that's where the incident happened. Indeed. That's Indeed. where he was killed. Yes, and I think most people know that, mm -hmm. civilians and uh, army, you know, servicemen alike. Mm -hmm. And I've never ever gone there before. I don't even or I never even looked at it when I was on the ring road. But yesterday, being the 4th of June in 40 years, I felt it would be a good thing to visit the Nima police station and see exactly where he fell, my father fell, look at it, uh, observe a minute silence for him, say a little prayer for him and um, get some closure as well. So I went there and uh, I asked for the uh, head of the station. Okay. Unfortunately he wasn't available but then there was something like a deputy head, I don't know, a district uh, sort of commander or something and I went and I stated my mission and he was very offhand with me. He intimated that he didn't know who General Odati Wellington was. He told me that he'd never heard about his passing in the, uh, at the Nima police station. And what I found callous is he said to me, I don't know whether he died in the street or in the yard. You don't talk to anybody like that. Not under these circumstances. He was so, I mean, he was so, so I went off. I was very upset. I, I get your understanding of this, but this is not the divisional commander. No, he this is not a person who superintends the place. No, no, no. I subsequently met him and he couldn't have been nicer. He couldn't have been nicer. But the sense I got was the minute the name Odarte Wellington is mentioned, people think, oh, this is a no-go area, it's politics. It's not politics. He was a soldier who died defending his country, and I happen to be his daughter. He's my father, first of all, and I should not be denied the right to honor him. I'm just like any other child, orphan, in this country and 40 years down the line I think it's regrettable that people still cannot bring themselves to stand up for the truth. The truth, the facts are not politics. Okay, let me get this straight. I mean it's not just immediately after the man's death that the family had to go through some of these people see you different, people actually not necessarily willing to cope with you. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the incident of the school. Yes. And how your siblings struggled to get into schools just because of the name. Yes. 
the, so, the last one because he was the one in primary yes. school. Fortunately, the rest of us were already in boarding school, mm -hmm. so that was fine. Yes, because of course we'd all attended school in the barracks, and yeah. so he was. So, but we couldn't go there because I, he tried. My mother tried, but because after he, uh, uh, well, what I forgot to say was that an officer took her Datsun 120Y. He expropriated it. He drove it around, he, he damaged it, so of course she was not mobile. So mm -hmm. traveling from North Kanishi to uh, where my aunt lived to the, but was very difficult. So mm -hmm. after a while then she had to try and find a school in the area. He, she tried certain you know, uh, government boarding pr schools, primary schools, and they wouldn't take him. Eventually she found some school, a private school somewhere in... That was yeah. the preferred option, actually. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, yes. So we have faced all sorts of discrimination uh, since my father died. And as I say, the incident yesterday confirmed that things haven't changed much because... 40 years down the line. Yes, because I, what I term these authoritarian enclaves, they just feel that they, they, they are going to upset somebody if they are seen to smile with that all. Because I don't see what is wrong with my going to the Nima police station to go and see where my father died. But as I say, the head of the uh, police station, he couldn't have been nicer when he came back and found what had happened. But I think it's quite in order if every year I want to go and lay a wreath there. Because after all, the police station is where people go when they want to seek redress or they have a problem. You say that your access to specific services, mm. even now, yes. are not being as smooth as supposed to be. Mm. Mm. Specifically, mm. what are we talking about? Mm. I, um, I'm organizing an event for my father. Okay. And because of this uh, feeling that one gets, and as I say, yesterday's was a concrete example. So I'm not being paranoid. Okay. I'm not able to say to people, well, I need a hall and I'm, I'm paying and I want to have this event because I am so scared that once they know the name, they will say, oh, we can't, you know, we, we, we can't, um, you know, we're busy on that day. So are we talking about state or private facilities in this country? This today? is private. This Pri is pri private. Private facilities. Mm, mm, mm. I, I have to be very careful. You come across people who say, oh, you know, what a wonderful idea. But in the main, I find that people are always pussyfooting around uh, things. They are not able to say concretely. And also what I find is people will say to me what a wonderful, brave man he was. They say to me privately, but I find that when you, they are not able to say that publicly because again, they think it will upset somebody. So there is just something, and I, I, as I say, I can't put my finger on it. It's not always tangible, it's palpable, you feel it. And I saw it yesterday when an officer intimated that he didn't know who General Odat Wellington was and he didn't know he died at the Nima police station and he could have died in the yard or in the street. He didn't care, he didn't know. Now, let me get this part also clarified. Now, the, these pop story we're talking about, this incident that happened to you, mm -hmm. is it extended to your siblings too, who come around, or it's only you? I would have thought so. Mm. I would have thought so. There's a question, and this is because you are a daughter of um, Major General Dr. Wellington. Those who say that, wh why are you talking about this? Why are you opening old wounds? Why don't you let the sleeping dogs lie? You've heard these claims before. Yes, I have indeed. And I, I actually got it when I was trying to organize my father's memorial um, service. I, I, I did you know, get it. They seemed to be troubled and they didn't want to be asked to do anything or didn't want to be asked for anything. And I say it's not their place to tell me how to celebrate my father. And in any event, the um, architects of the mutiny, every 4th June, they literally jump up and down our father's graves, celebrating June 4th, extolling its virtues, and nobody says to them, you're opening new wounds. But so, these are your wounds. 
they are my wounds, I choose to open my wounds or not open them. It's not up to anybody to tell me. But what I'm saying is, if others are celebrating June 4, do they ever think that they are hurting us? Do they ever think that they are opening our wounds? Why don't they tell them to stop celebrating it? It cuts both ways. Has, has a memorial ever been done um, for your father? No. You intend doing one? Yes. You're not afraid? My name is Odati Wellington. I am not afraid. But have you received some sort of, even if it's subtle, opposition to this uh, quest? Oh, yes. As I, as I said to you, um, there are people, some that I respect very much, who were a bit ambivalent about the whole thing and didn't want to get involved or didn't want to be seen attending. Mm. And why should that be? Why should that be? But this is 40 years. This is a long time. But somehow our names or the names of our fathers or my father seems to upset certain people. Or they think uh, rightly or wrongly, I don't know that they might upset somebody somewhere or it might upset the apple cart. I, I really don't know what their rationale is. But I say I am a daughter who is proud of her father and wants to honor the name of her father and his memory. And I should be allowed to do so. And so, nothing more be read into it. So it will happen, right? Oh, it will happen. It will happen. I am going to do it. It's 40 years. The general, he sacrificed his life. He did a lot for Ghana. We have to live here. And I appreciate your coming in today. I appreciate your willingness to share your story with us. And I'm sure we'll be there at the memorial. But thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you very much, Raymond, for having me. I'm very grateful because uh, your platform has given me the opportunity to talk and to try and dispel some of the uh, erroneous uh, ideas or um, erroneous information that has been swelling around my father and his demise and everything that he did. And on that note, I, if you permit me, mm -hmm. I would like to say that it would be a very good thing if the report of the National Reconciliation Commission was published because there is a wealth of information in there and I think it's important that people know exactly what happened and I know that Ghanaians are a discerning people and they will make up their minds when they have read that report. Thank you very much. I'm grateful once again for coming. Well folks that's where we end today's edition of Upfront. My name is Raymond Aqua. Many thanks to you for joining us on this one.